Hello everyone, it's Carrie, and in today's video I'm working on a Draculaura and making her into a little voodoo doll. I'll be showing how I did the face up, as well as part of the costume where I make a corset, or well, sort of a corset, out of some warbler, so stay tuned for that, as well as some final look photos. So when I do conventions, I love to do a small line or just a, a few dolls that are more affordable that I can offer at a lower price point because I don't give them a full reroute and it's not a particular character. So I can just kind of flex my art skills and use it as an opportunity to challenge myself and try different things. And then I make a simple costume. So for this year's Mad Monster Party, I made this line of three little voodoo dolls and at the time of making this video this one had sold at the convention but I do still have a couple others that will be up in the shop and I'll also have some videos for those coming up soon. So make sure to check out the link in the description box below if you're interested in uh, purchasing one of my dolls or if you'd like to be on my VIP list where I'll send out early access or you know uh, artist previews to your email address and when the dolls become prior to the dolls becoming available for purchase on my Etsy page so shoot me your email address if you'd like to be on that list and uh, you can do that by emailing me at scariosities at gmail.com and the link to that is in the description box below so since this Draculaura has a smile uh, in her face sculpt, this is one of the newer ones, I decided to take advantage of it and give her a little bit of a smirk. So I'm working on that. And then for the lip, I'm using a purple pan pastel. And I do the upper lip, usually I'll do the upper lip darker and then the bottom lip a little bit lighter with a highlight that I'll use some white pan pastel to blend out. doing some darkening up of the contours with some pink watercolor pencil by Faber-Castell. And then I'm doing a bit of shading to accentuate the, the cheeks where they're lifting up because of the smirk that she's giving with some custom mix, of, custom mix of some blush colored pan pastel that I made. To make that I just mixed up a couple of different shades of pink and white and a little bit of the peachy tones just to get like a perfect pink to go uh, to use for blushing and for shading like this. So darkening up the nostrils and giving them some shape and also darkening the corners of the lips to accentuate the uh, half smile she's doing. And I'm using a white Derwent watercolor pencil to do some highlighting around the eyes. And I decided to give her a bit of a smoky eye, so I'm using this black pan pastel. And then I'll mix it in with that pearlescent black. And then some purple for blending it out. And when I say blending it out, I don't blend it out too far because we're working in a very small space and we could easily take up half of her face with blending. So I try to control that and keep it in the small area. And then everything that I'm doing here I will do at least one more time and I don't always show that on camera because I don't want to be repetitive so uh, just know that I do go back and these colors that I'm adding to the shading in the eye eyelashes or eyebrow area eyebrow area in the eyelash or lash line is what I'm looking for so around the lash line also the shading in the face if I feel like it needs a little bit more pop and even on the lips. So I'll go back and give it a second coat just to make everything stand out and you'll see kind of a transition in a little bit where you'll see everything kind of pop a little bit more and just know that that's after I had gone in and done a second coat of everything. So here I'm trying to put together how I'm going to shape the eyebrows to really capture that smirk and make it a little bit more exaggerated and since I'm using a white wig, I decided to do the eyebrows in gray. I didn't want to do them in white because her skin tone is so light here. I didn't think that it would show up very well, so I decided to go with gray. And I use a gray and black pencils, the gray and black Derwent watercolor pencils and Faber-Castell pencils to do some uh, 
individual hair line work. And then I give her a little bit of a highlight there, which you can't see very well at this point, but like I said, with one more coat, or a couple more coats of Mr. Super Clear in the middle, and then adding a second layer of all the color, everything pretty much pops after that. The key is, is really with your initial sealing. Um, I, I know a lot of people, and I did when I first started a few years ago, one of my biggest frustrations was the color showing up when I get started. And the key is just making sure that you've got a good solid coating to work with of the sealer at the beginning. So you want to hold the can about uh, at least five or six inches away from the face and just do a back and forth uh, spray. And then <clears throat> wait a couple minutes to let it dry and then do sort of a back and forth spray again. And you do that about four times before you get started and you'll have a really nice base to work on and the colors will show up better and then if you do that spraying in between it'll allow you to build up the color again even better so I've been super busy lately so I'm sorry if I haven't addressed all of the comments in the comment section but if you have any questions on that I'll do my best to get to it to answer now that this last conventions over I have a little bit more time to read comments and things so there you can see the with the second layer of colors uh, that I was talking about, everything's kind of popping a little bit more. For her eyes, I used a little bit of gold in the pupil and mixed it out with some pink. And then I used purple for her iris. I'm trying to do a little bit of shading on the inside of the eye to make the eyeball look round and then I'm going in and adding the eyelashes making sure that I'm using a very 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 sharp pencil so those lines aren't too thick and if they are I'll erase it and do it again So if you're interested in, uh, this doll has already sold, but if you're interested in one of the dolls that I've made for the convention recently, I, I will have the line coming out soon uh, on my Etsy page. So make sure that you're, um, make sure you check out and favorite my Etsy page so you can be notified when I have new dolls released. Or even better, if you want to shoot me an email at curiosities at gmail.com. I can add you to my VIP mailing list and I'll send out, uh, I, I usually will send out a list of the dolls that are available prior to being listed on Etsy so you guys can have like first chance. So just shoot me an email to scuriosities at gmail.com and just let me know. I'd love to be added to your waiting or your VIP list. And so there is the face up. So I added a, a few coats of Mr. Super Clear to seal it very good. Make sure you add several coats before you go in and gloss the eyes. So I'll use a Liquitex high gloss varnish to gloss the eyes and lips. And I just say that because if you add the varnish and you haven't given enough coats of Mr. Super Clear, then you could really kind of mess up the work that you just did. So onto the costume. This is just a really quick look at how I made a bit of a corset type thing for her. I, I used a glue dot to keep it on, but um, I had been working with this Warbla on our recent collab video where we had video a video game collab. So if you haven't checked that out, make sure to check out that. It's quite a long video with a lot of stuff that I shared, so hopefully you'll enjoy that. And also check out the videos of those who participated in the collab. I'll put an eye card for that for you to check that out but uh so so I shaped it to the body of the doll and then I added this wood glue just to kind of smooth out the roughness of the warbla and then I'll let that dry uh for a couple of hours and then add a second coat 
and then that makes it a little bit smooth. So then I'll add some paint, and then after painting it, I'll use this Mod Podge Dimensional Magic, which will give it a nice shine and dimension. And then like I said, I use a glue dot to add that to the doll. I made one of each for the voodoo dolls that I made for this collection. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, I'd love it if you gave it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. Bye.